Hey, welcome back to another episode of NextGen VR. Today I want to go over a definitive and comprehensive guide on how to get the best out of your Pimax 8KX. Whether you're a new 8KX owner or somebody who is struggling with certain features of the 8KX or problems that you're having, I hope this guide will be useful to you. First, let's go over the basics for how to use the headset. Assuming you went through the installation process guide, you've got your 8KX and base stations plugged in, and you've got it running, you will need to install Pi Tool, and I would recommend installing Pimax Experience as well. So here in Pi Tool, I will describe everything you need to know. Now, here is where you can pair your controllers if you haven't already. Under settings, you can check the latest firmware, version and the latest Pi tool. And then under HMD settings, here is where you're able to change settings like between native and upscaling. Native mode has 75 hertz, and if you've flashed the beta firmware, you can switch to 90 hertz, but that's a bit complicated for now, so let's not worry about that. In upscaling mode, you're able to use 114 hertz mode, but it runs at a lower resolution. So on certain games, you might want to use upscaling mode rather than native mode. So let's go through the rest of the settings. We have backlight adjustments, so you can adjust how bright you like it. IPD and vertical offset, this is software IPD, you shouldn't worry about that for now. Under games tab here, you can change the field of view, large, normal, etc. Now, normal is not too different from large, except you have less peripheral FOV, but not that much less. So if you want to improve performance, you can try normal instead of large. Render quality, I recommend it to start off with one. This is native render resolution. Fixed foveated rendering is a technology that enables you to have high resolution in the center of the eye and lower resolution in the periphery. So close basically means it's turned off. Aggressive means it's in the highest setting, which means you might notice it in your periphery. And balanced and conservative are less so. So if you want, you can try conservative first and see if that is not too distracting for you, but I usually leave it as off, which is close. Now here, you do not want to bother with parallel projection for most games. Smart smoothing, you also shouldn't worry about that for now. Always leave hidden area mask enabled and leave this unchecked. Now over here, you can adjust contrast and brightness. So I recommend the best setting would probably be plus one contrast, minus two brightness. This gives the most realistic picture quality. And then when you're done, you hit apply and then save. So, so for example, if you have render quality set to one, that means in Steam VR you can adjust the resolution between 100% to probably 120%. Look at the resolution per eye. This is about a good amount of resolution, but I have a 3090, so you can probably try 90% if you have a less powerful GPU. Now, if you go above, you can probably get to 120% while still getting good performance. Again, it depends on your FOV mode. Or, in order to improve the picture quality, you can try another option. Some people have said that a higher render quality results in a better picture. So you can try 1.25 or even 1.5, but keep in mind that increasing render quality here takes a much higher performance hit than in just increasing super sampling. So I will show you the best settings if you try 1.25 or higher. So for 1.25, you'll want to have super sampling set to around 80% or lower. When you do 1.5, you can set super sampling on Steam to about 30 to 50 percent. The idea is the higher the native render quality, the better picture it's going to render, and so you would need less Steam VR super sampling. And in, in some games, it's much more effective to improve picture quality using this render quality slider than it is to um, just increase super sampling. In games like uh, in some games, increasing super sampling doesn't seem to improve the game at all. For example, in Half-Life Alex, they use a dynamic engine. So increasing render quality would have a better effect than just increasing super sampling. So now let's go over some of the miscellaneous features. So we have an option called compatible with parallel projections. You always want to leave this off for most games. And if you start a game and you start to see double vision or weird artifacts, then you can exit the game, enable it, and then start the game. 
Now in Pimax Experience, you can set individual settings for each game, so you'll be able to enable parallel projection for the games that need it. These are typically games like um, Elite Dangerous, which will need parallel projection, um, and so on. Now Smart Smoothing, this is a technology that tries to improve performance. This is mainly useful for flight sims or racing sims that have frame drops. Smart Smoothing will help uh, make it seem smoother even though the frame rate is not running very well. So this cuts the frame rate in half. So you don't want to use this if you're getting good frame rate already. You only want to use this if you're getting bad frame rate currently. Here in IPD software, um, this is the software IPD adjustment so you can adjust the panels and the vertical offset of each screen but it's always better to do hardware IPD adjustment than software but this is just an option to keep in mind. So now I'm going to go into how to minimize or eliminate eye strain, how to eliminate blurriness in one eye and um, other common fitment issues and stuff like that. So over here I have the Pimax 8KX and it's currently modded and in the back here you can see I have the thick face foam installed. Now you should have received a both thick and thin face foam to experiment with. So this foam has cutouts for glasses. I personally like to use the thick face foam with my glasses when using this headset. And um, at, the, at, the, at the right here is an I hardware IPD adjustment slider. Now I have it set to the lowest setting. My IPD is 63. Now the reason for this is I find I get the best 3D effect and it seems like the best picture quality in the lowest IPD settings. So the IPD of the hardware is about two or three higher than the actual number. So if your IPD is 65, the actual IPD on the slider, you'll need to set it to 62 or 63 at minimum or lower. So you can experiment with this IPD slider to get a clear picture in each eye. What you want to do is when you put on the headset, you want to close one eye and see if it's sharp in that one, then close the other eye and see if it's sharp in the other eye. Now if it's not, what you want to do is this, it's very easy to get the headset misaligned. So when you put the headset on, you want to look down at your nose and make sure it's exactly in the center. Even just a millimeter off will make it um, look not right. Another thing is the height of the foam on your head matters. So if you can experiment with moving your headset up and down on your face to find out where the sweet spot is. Once you find where the sweet spot is, you want to tighten the top strap to in order to keep it that way. Next, you also want to tighten the back knob in order to make sure it holds well on your face. Not too loose, but also not so tight that it causes you face markings basically. So basically there's two ways to adjust IPD directly through the hardware IPD slider and indirectly by the distance of your eyes to the lenses. So depending on if you use a thick face foam then your eyes are further from the lenses that means they're more likely to be in the center. If you're using the thin face foam there your eyes are closer to the lenses so they might be off depending on your hardware slider. So you can experiment by moving the headset closer and farther from your eyes to see where you get the best picture quality and also the distance is critical in reducing distortions. I notice for me the distortions only cover about less than 10% of the edge of each lens but if I put it too close to my eyes or in a different way then I can notice a lot more fishbowl distortion it becomes bothersome. So distortion is all about the distance. So Another thing you can do is remove the foam entirely and then just experiment until you find what's the best um, mount for you and then try to get some custom foam made for your particular face shape. In addition to shifting the headset up and down to find the sweet spot, you also want to tilt it left and right to see whether you can get it sharp in one eye if it's blurry in the other. Then you'll know where to try the software IPD offset. But if you're having that issue, I recommend trying a slightly thicker face foam before doing software IPD adjustments. There are tutorials on the Pimax forum for how to get the best software IPD setting. I won't go over that here, but basically it's about oh, closing one eye, then measuring the distance of what you're looking at, and then adjusting accordingly, and then alternating eyes. It's kind of complicated, so really just try the simpler steps to see if you can fix your problem before 
trying any software IPD adjusting. Another tip I'd recommend is when you adjust the hardware IPD, adjust it to a level where the world looks slightly bigger than you think it should look. That kind of helps to give an overall 3D effect and I find that I enjoy the headset the most this way. When the world scale looks small, then it just really breaks immersion. So you want to have the hardware IPD on a low enough setting that you can get that better 3D effect. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button that helps spread it to many more audiences. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for many more videos, tips and tricks and VR news about the latest and greatest VR headsets. So thanks for watching guys.